Hello, hello and welcome back. While I know it has been a longer small hiatus than I initially expected, we are finally back here and today we are looking over episode 4 and 5, I believe, of Failure Frame. Now, I'm gonna be honest here that my first impression while watching these two episodes was that it felt a bit slow. It felt that these two episodes could have been made into one, because I don't feel we really advanced too much in these two episodes that we couldn't have done in a faster, more efficient way. But it was still somewhat entertaining, so I'm not gonna go too hard on it for doing it the way they did. So as we see Toka here going to this city for the first time, and he is obviously there to get some skeleton powder to amp up his uh, slime companion so he is more powerful. And it happens to be the case that, you know, the dungeon is having some sort of a uh, reward from the Marquis to get this specific chalice. So tons of mercenaries come in to do the same job, right? To explore the dungeon, get this valuable item. And of course, the Elven Princess, who has now done some disguising with some uh, fairy pacts, is also there to get the chalice because I suppose she is uh, in financial dire straits. So she is uh, trying to get some uh, money in the bank. Now, I don't necessarily dislike a lot of the interactions between Toka and the uh, Elven Princess here or the paladin, rather. I do like how they are generally doing their relationship, you know, being very slow, being very methodical and more careful, right? They aren't just immediately being super trusting of each other. They aren't just immediately being super buddy-buddy and close. And I do like, in contrast to many other anime, where the main character and, you know, the waifu just instantly get on great and become really trusting of each other. I do like it in this one where... It seems it's going to take, you know, a while before they really start to trust each other, even though we slowly start to see that trust build up ever so slowly at the end of the fifth episode. But that they're taking it slow is definitely a, a positive for me, and hopefully they build more on that and don't just skip over it and now suddenly be buddy-buddy moving forward. On that point as well, I will give credit to the show for making sure that we realize that Toka, you know, he is calculated, right? He is being smart here. They showcase him, first of all, you know, eavesdropping in the tavern while he's having food, and at the same time as he's eating, as he needs to, of course, to, to survive here. He takes the time to eavesdrop on the local populace to learn about the world, you know, different factions, armies, and whatnot. And we see this same sort of calculating mythology moving forward, especially in his interactions with the uh, elven waifu, right? Where he says specific things to get specific reactions or specific results, as we get to learn from his inner monologue during these conversations. And I do quite like that. Again, just showcasing that Toka, you know, he he's sort of in the mindset of, I'm going to use anyone I can. Even if they're nice or good people, I'm going to be calculating and sort of just use them for my own benefit, even if I might, you know, dislike myself for doing it. So if they continue with that sort of approach for his character moving forward, I think that is going to be somewhat interesting to see exactly where they go with that in the end. But hopefully, though, he will keep sort of showcasing this, let's say, smart sort of uh, calculating approach to everything in uh, life. Of course, though, we couldn't have an episode without another classical bad guy wanting just to grape the elven waifu. It's like, dude, does every single bad guy in this Isekai world grape people? Like, it seems like everyone is like, oh, nice looking Elven Waifu. I guess what we gotta do with her before we kill her. It's like, okay, okay, I get it. Bad people. Yes, yes, bad guys. All right, we got it. Anyhow, though, I don't really know why they existed in episode four, these bad guys. It's like, okay, so why are these people here? I mean, I suppose they only existed so that Toka could off them and not really show any remorse for doing so. We've, we've already seen him just murdering people, though, before, that were also, you know, bad people, the Holy Watchers, whatnot. So I don't really know what exactly this accomplishes. I don't feel like that scene or that entire interaction between the Elven Princess and this douchey rich guy and the aftermath of that, I don't feel like it actually had any impact at all on the story, because Toka doesn't do anything that we don't know he is already capable of. So why have another scene where he just goes in, pretends to be weak, or pretends to, you know, be, be sorry, before just doing his paralysis, poison, and, and gone, right? Since we have already seen him being able or willing and have no remorse for offing people. I don't know why we keep showing this if it doesn't have any other 
relevant story, well, relevance, right? Anyhow, you know, these bad guys get off and the episode just ends with, uh, you know, him and the Elven waifu fighting the skeleton dragon, at which point, of course, they both sort of realize each other's power in a way, while the Elven princess, uh, Seras, you know, gets to see Toka just one-shotting this skeleton king that she herself could barely maybe beat if she was in her spirit form. And, you know, that's when we still sort of start getting the start of this uh, trusting relationship, right? I do like that Sarah's, you know, the Elven waifu here. I mean, she does seem to be a very nice character, right? She's caring, she's very, very adamant about, you know, paying back her debts and being like an upstanding person. So I don't really have any issues with her character so far. She's very likable, obviously. See, she looks really good, as everyone in the show also makes note of continually. I have to say, though, that uh, ending fight scene with the dragon whatnot, dragon riders in episode 5, it's like, ugh. The 3D, the CGI and whatnot in this show really still just keeps bugging me a lot. It really puts me off. And I just wish the fight scenes in general even if they are a 3G, 3D CGI whatnot, I really wanted them to be better, you know? They just look and feel so, eh, you know? No fight scene or action scene so far have, has felt, like, good at all. It's all felt very placid, for the lack of a better word. I just hope that they actually have some good fight scenes in the season, and that it's not all like this, because then it'll feel pretty, pretty subpar for me, for sure. Of course, at the end of the uh, the fight scene with the dragon and whatnot, we get the official start of the, uh, you know, Elwyn Waifu and uh, Toka MC team up adventure road trip as of next episode, going to find this, uh, this witch to get the forbidden spell to uh, be ready to take on the goddess in the future. I do also like the very small tidbits of world building they include here, being like, hey, you know, why are these spells forbidden? Just because the goddess made them so. Which makes sense, of course. Which means, of course, clearly they would have some sort of danger to herself, which is why she would ban them, most likely. So, okay. All good. I like it. Makes sense. We do also get another few snippets, though, of uh, content from the, uh, the rest of the class. It does seem that the show wants to just include a few small snippets here and there throughout the season of how the class is doing, which is fine, as long as it's not too much, because I don't really care about them so far. Again, we see that, you know, Sogo, the uh, student council president, you know, still very goody, nice character, you know, upstanding. And of course, she is again manipulated into doing more work for the goddess, because the goddess is a POS and, uh, well, still wants to off the ones that couldn't complete the initial task. So now she's pressuring Sogo again to sort of train them to get them to be ready, because if they aren't, well, they're going to be offed. And of course, the uh, goddess keeps playing very sad and innocent and, uh, you know, fake crying, because she's a absolute biatch, and who complains about, about a decree from the, the king and whatnot. Like, yeah, sure, sure, I'm sure it wasn't you that made that decree. Sure, uh-huh. We all believe you, surely. But yeah, I do like how they are just giving snippets of the relationship between the the rest of the class on the other side of the world here. Again, you know, we see that the golden-haired uh, guy, the uh, wannabe main character, is very self-interested still, you know, very selfish, and clearly doesn't really care if he even hits his classmates just to get some XP. So I'm sure they will play more on that and the conflict between the classmates, especially like the student council president and the uh, golden-haired wannabe MC and others moving forward, so that could be quite interesting, hopefully. The most interesting, though, the also the note of what? What did she, uh, the Elven Princess, say? That uh, people with golden hair or whatever else, golden hero, you know, might be evil or whatnot? I forget the exact context, but okay, so they're clearly kind of hinting at, foreshadowing the potential that uh, our main wannabe blonde uh, MC is uh, going to turn out to be evil. We'll have to see, though, on all of that and more. Anyhow, though, in episode 4, episode 5, didn't really feel too eventful. It was like, it was okay. I really wanted them to do more with what they had, timing-wise. They could have, I think, just gotten these two episodes into one. I don't think that would have hurt the content at all. Hopefully, the next episodes will, will be more eventful, or we will learn more, or interesting things will happen more. I still have hope for this show to be somewhat good, but, uh... Yeah, hopefully we just get more action scenes and better animation and less CGI, less 3D, and uh, just a more solid, narrowed down story moving forward. Anyhow, though, what are your thoughts on episode 4 and 5 of Failure Frame? Leave all those thoughts down below. And of course, remember to like and subscribe to support my channel here and everything I am doing. That being said, hope you have a nice day, keep watching anime, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.